Hi, and uh, let's start the training. Um, this first section, this is a newer section that they've added, um, and it goes through the survey process for resident rights. Um, it's in 59A-36.001. The first section you see is standards and criteria for determining compliance with facility standards and resident rights. Number two, it says survey process for resident rights. The following core survey tasks shall be utilized during survey activities in order to, to determine the facility's compliance with resident rights pursuant to 429.28, which I told you is, I think that's resident rights listed within the Florida statutes. The surveyor conducts a tour of the facility to determine if the resident's health, safety, and welfare are maintained. The tour includes observations and assessments of the following. So remember, the surveyor is showing up at your facility and this is the process they follow. Number one, they're going to assess the resident's behavior and demeanor. For example, do they look scared, threatened? Um, do they um, appear in good health? Number two, adherence to facility abuse prohibition policy and procedure. Um, I think they'd be looking for um, policies and procedures for abuse, neglect, exploitation, adherence to infection control policy and procedure. So does your facility have a policy and procedure for infection control and have your staff been trained on it? So all your employee files will have to have that type of training. Number four, the general physical plant standards in accordance with 59A-36. Um, they're going to look for soiled um, furniture, torn furniture, uh, facility in disrepair in any way. Marks on the walls, they could, they could be looking for. You need to keep it up and maintain it. And be aware, um, like dining room table, is it scratched, you know? And sometimes residents scratch tables. Maybe you need to use a tablecloth. Are the tablecloths dirty? Um, your physical plant standards are going to be looked at. Are there trip hazards? Those type of things. So when you walk around the facility, you're going to be on a daily basis when you go in uh, looking for those things. And your staff should also be trained to be aware of anything that would be uh, in violation of a, of a physical plant uh, rule. Uh, the overall appearance of residents and the observation of any special care needs. So here's an example. Uh, are the residents wearing soiled clothes? Do they smell? Um, do they let, do their nails look cared for? Um, are they eating dinner or lunch when the surveyor comes in? And are they struggling to use the utensils? Maybe you need, that would be an indication or a cue to the surveyor that they need, your facility needs to provide adaptive equipment to make it easier for that resident to, uh, to eat. They're going to be looking for your bill of rights and the required phone numbers that are listed, um, you know, everything listed in 59A-36. And um, I think ACA has a poster that has um, well, the ombudsman can get you a poster uh, that needs to be listed, but there also should be a printout there. I think ACA offers a printout of, of all the contact phone numbers. Resident access to phones and unrestricted private communication. So is there a phone available to the residents? Readily available, not up high. If somebody's in a wheelchair, can they reach it? Um, you'd be in violation of of their resident rights if they don't have access to a phone and also a place where they could go and privately communicate. Um, do the residents have an opportunity to exercise? Are the staff availability and responsiveness to the resident care needs? So they'll be observing if a resident needs something, if they're trying to get up, if they ask to go to the restroom and there's no staff there to respond there could be a violation of a resident right. Medication storage and security. So the surveyor is going to go around and they're going to, they're going to look around and see a medication cabinet left wide open or a medication cart left unattended. Um, 
physical or chemical restraints are those being used? Is there a physical restraint, somebody being held down in some way that could be considered a, a physical restraint, or do they appear to be chemically restrained? Um, positioning, transferring process utilized by the staff. They're going to watch transferring um, of a, a resident. If they see a resident needs more than one person to assist, they might go look at your health assessment to see if that was indicated, if it's a two-person assist or a three-person assist or total transfer. Um, any specialized care provided by the facility with a specialty license? So are you offering LNS services? We're gonna get into those things. But this process just makes you aware of what, uh, through the eyes of the surveyor, okay? Thought this was valuable. Any license conditions or restrictions as a result of agency um, actions? So is there a moratorium on your facility? Um, those type of things. Um, so the surveyor conducts interviews with residents, family members, representatives, staff, and other persons. Um, the facility may not restrict agency staff from conducting confidential interviews. Number two, interviews may be conducted both in person and by telephone. C, the surveyor reviews facility records to determine compliance uh, with A, with the number one, license requirements, inspection responsibilities, admissions procedures, resident care standards, medication practices, uh, DNRO uh, policies, procedures, uh, staffing standards, staff training, Alzheimer's disease or related disorder training. So if you're a memory care, do you have the appropriate training requirements? We get into all of these things in further detail, but just to give you a like a, an overview um, picture. Food service standards are your, the people who are serving food, are they trained in according, accordance um, with 59A? Physical standards in accordance with um, uh, sorry, fiscal standards, physical plan standards, records in accordance to 59A, uh, resident contracts, they're going to make sure your contracts are um, in accordance with 59A and also in 429. Emergency management, they're going to look at your emergency plan. And um, the facility must provide agency staff with the requested documents in a timely manner and allow agency staff to obtain copies. E, the surveyor conducts specific and general observations throughout the survey to determine compliance with dietary standards, medication standards, infection control standards, resident activities, ac assistance with activities of daily living, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, facilities licensed to provide specialty services such as limited mental health, ECC, limited nursing services. The surveyor reviews the required components in accordance with 59A. So I think it's set up here at the top, timely manner. Let's just go back and review what that says. Timely manner means as soon as possible, but not to exceed 24 hours of agency having agency staff having requested the materials. Okay. Uh, go ahead and click next down below, and we're going to go into the definitions. It's good to know. Um, uh, the definitions, okay?